Hello, I'm John Regan and welcome to my coffee break. Have you ever had one of those moments, one of those times in your life when, when something seems to change your life forever? And I, I don't mean being involved in a car smash or, or, or being put in jail for a crime you didn't commit. No, what I mean is something that changed your mindset, the, the way you think about your life and, the, and where it's going. I can uh, tell you how it happened to me some years ago. <laughs> in fact, I can remember the very day. It was the 19th of January, 1987, on a warm summer's day in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. And I was on my way to work as a used car salesman. And uh, <laughs> I hated the job. I wasn't looking forward to it at all because I was useless. I was a useless salesman. In fact, a couple of days before, I'd, I'd won the award for the worst salesman of the month for the second time running. <laughs> and I was sitting in my car there at the traffic lights, which were red, and cruising smoothly and silently to a halt beside me was a gleaming white Rolls Royce Cornish convertible with the top down. And sitting beside the driving seat was a young man around, what, 35 years of age. And he looked incredible. He had a, an immaculate hairstyle, just a hint of designer streaks in his hair. He was wearing those blacker than black Ray-Ban sunglasses. And he had uh, music was playing on his stereo. I remember it was Ray Charles was singing that song, uh, Hey Mama, don't you treat me wrong. Come on, I love you, Daddy, all night long. All right, tell me what I say. Tell me what I say. And, and his hand was tapping in time with the music on the white leather steering wheel. And I could see the sun reflecting off his solid gold Rolex Oyster watch as he sat there. And, and he turned and looked at me as I sat there staring at him like a fool. <laughs> and he gave a half smile as the lights changed and he just cruised smoothly away. You know. Well, I was impressed. I was impressed. Tell me what I say. Tell me what I say. I mean, I, I wasn't uh, uh, envious. I wasn't jealous. I was just totally impressed with this epitome of super success that had just driven off. And I just sat there stunned. And the lights were changing and all the people started blowing their horns and telling me where to go in no uncertain manner. And, well, I didn't go to work. No, I quit my job that very day. I drew, turned around and went home. And it put me in search of uh, an answer to a few questions that I wanted to, to find the answers to in my life. And I, I, I started to study the lives of rich and successful people. You know, people who enjoyed every day that they lived, doing what they wanted to do going where they wanted to go, having what they wanted to have, and, and becoming who they wanted to be. You know, rich and successful people who stood out from the rest of us like Superman or Superwoman. And I wondered, what was it? What was their secret that made them rich and successful? And so I started, I started reading all these books and biographies on successful people. I attended seminars on personal development. I, I studied the lives of all these motivational gurus, all in an attempt to find out what it was that made them rich and successful. And then one day I went to a seminar and I heard a guy called Bob Proctor speaking at the seminar. And one of the things he said was interesting. He said, did you know that at the age of 65, 96% of the population are either dead, dead broke, or on a pension. 96% yeah. of the population are either dead, dead broke, or on a pension at the age of 65. And 3% are regarded as financially independent, which doesn't mean they're rich, it just means they've, they've got enough to get by for the rest of their life. And only 1% was regarded as rich 
And I think the Bureau of Statistics regard rich as having in excess of uh, one million dollars or more. I mean, a million dollars used to be a lot of money years ago, but it's not anymore. And then another thing that Bob Proctor said gave me the answer I've been looking for for a long, long time. In fact, Bob Proctor was looking for the same answer for around nine years. And when he found it, within 24 months, he became a millionaire. And this question was this. Why is it that only 1% of the world's population earn almost all the money in the world? 1% of the population earn around 96% of all the money in the world. That 1% are richer than all the others put together. And do you know the answer he gave? The answer he gave was so simple. It was so straightforward, so easy to understand. It, it was incredible. The answer he gave was this, that the rest of us are programmed to settle for less. We are programmed to settle for less. Programmed in the negative. And in most cases, our parents and their parents and their parents were programmed to settle for less too. You've all heard the sayings, money is the root of all evil. That's right. Money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. It takes money to make money. You know, Rich people are evil. Spiritual people are poor. And, and successful people got there by conning poor people. All these negative uh, phrases that we use to justify our mundane existence. We become experts in denial. I think it was Zig Ziglar who said, uh, denial is not a river in Egypt. Denial is a state of mind which turns us into settlers. We, we become victims. We adopt a victim mentality, blaming everything and everybody on our mundane existence. We blame our government, our upbringing, our environment, the color of our skin, uh, our lack of knowledge, our lack of skills, our lack of money, our lack of time, anything that we can choose to justify why we live such a mediocre existence. You know. We become average. And that is the blueprint of our society. We live in an average society. So, what is average? Well, average is being programmed from early childhood to go to school, to study hard and get good grades, to get an acceptable job in the workforce. Which actually means spending the rest of your life getting up, going out every day to a job which we hate. You know, to do work which we hate because somebody else who we probably hate told us to do so. In order to earn just enough money to pay the bills, but not enough to get us what we really want. You know 99% of the workforce hate their jobs. 99%, which means that 99% of the workforce are, are working an average of, what, 50 hours a week at a job which they hate and expecting to get wealthy? No way! You don't get wealthy doing something that you hate. You get wealthy doing something that you love. And so we go around in this average society and, and then one day, Da, 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 da. You meet somebody and the wedding bells ring and you get married. And what are you expected to do? Settle down. Yeah. You get a mortgage, if you're lucky. Uh, a couple of kids come along. One or two, sometimes three or four. Extra mouths to feed. You know, your school uniforms, school fees, braces for their teeth. You drive a second-hand Ford or a Toyota or a Nissan or, or a Fiat, which are, are cars especially made for poor people. There's no, there's no Lamborghinis or Ferraris or Rolls Royces here. And, and if you're lucky, if you're very lucky, by the time you reach retirement age, uh, you might have a little bit of superannuation put away. But if not, you have to settle for your bus pass and your old age pension. I mean, our children, bless them, will try to support us in our old age. Uh, until finally we're so infirmed that we're deposited into an old people's nursing home where we waste away until we die. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think we were put on this earth to live like that. And just